All right, we're back here at Mummert Y Block and we're building a better 312 and we're degreeing the camshaft. So um, this is something that uh, a lot of people seem to have difficulty with. So we're going to try to explain this to you guys. Hopefully you'll walk away from it a little smarter. So one of the first things you got to do to degree a camshaft is you got to install the cam and you have to put the timing chain on correctly. Okay. And then the next thing you have to do is you have to install the degree wheel onto the crankshaft because you'll be reading uh, crankshaft degrees in relation to lifter movement. And then you'll have to install pointer so that you know where you're at. And then let's see. So once you install the degree wheel, the most important thing to do is you have to make sure that you get this degree wheel on uh, true to the stroke of the crankshaft. So when we do that, what we do is we have an indicator on the piston. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to move the piston down 50 thousandths one way. And then we're going to see what degrees we have. And then we're going to move the piston down 50 thousandths, turning the engine the other way. And see how many degrees we have. And to get the degree wheel balanced, you'll want to have an even number of degrees uh, each way you go. So for this particular engine, it's 11 and a half degrees right now. Let me see if I can get this thing to sit here. Okay. So, um, like, uh, if we move this to 11 and a half, you can't see the indicator, of course, but right there, we're at 50 thousands down travel. And then if we go to zero and then we go the other way to 11 and a half, we're at 50 thousands down travel. And that's how we know we have a perfect zero. So once you have that established once you have and you can use one indicator we have two here but we're just doing it for simplicity um once you have the degree wheel on the crankshaft and uh balanced out right then what you need to do is you need to then set up the indicator on the number one intake valve because you'll be reading uh, intake lifter travel, okay? You're reading the lobe travel in relationship to the crankshaft. Okay, so the one thing I don't ever really pay too much attention to is the cam card. And the reason is, is that uh, most cams are always a little different than the cam card so you know if you sit and try to live and die on those numbers you'll probably just find yourself being upset a lot um you know i typically go by you know roughly the one percent rule because cams sometimes are closer than that but uh, a lot of times they're not so uh this cam is uh supposed to be 228 at 50 so if it comes out anywhere between 230 or sorry 226 and 231 I'll call it good good enough for what we're doing uh, it's supposed to be 336 low lift so if it comes out anywhere between oh, 332 and 339 or something like that I'll call it fine um, I know you guys want to sit and believe that the cams are closer than that but a lot of times they're not you know, they just, this is how it is. So 1%, um, we're going to live inside of that. So what we can do though, is we can choose, uh, where we want to pick our center line at. A lot of, uh, camshaft manufacturers like to use 50 and the term 50 is pretty simple. Uh, if this baseline represents zero then you'll 
roll the lifter open to 50 thousandths and take your uh, reading on the degree wheel and then you'll go all the way up and over the lobe and back down to 50 and you'll take your next degree wheel reading and then those will be your timing numbers your intake opening and your intake closing but you can use a hundred or two hundred or even three hundred lift if your lobe has that much um, you know any one of these locations works perfectly fine for checking your intake center line um, I've always been a 200 guy myself so that's usually where I check the uh, center line at is 200 numbers and you know like I said because we're just checking the center line of this lobe um, you know we don't really need the cam card all that much All right, you guys ready to do some math here? So, uh, even though I'm a 200 guy, I checked this at 50 thousandths, and just as a reference, you'll see with later. But, uh, so we checked it, and the intake opened, that's IO, at seven degrees before top center. So these, all these letters matter. This is before top center, seven degrees. Now the intake closed 223 degrees after top center. Now that's the exact same thing as 43 degrees after bottom dead center. Um, there's 180 degrees from top to bottom. So you'll notice these two numbers are 180 degrees different. So um for doing degreeing information see this 43 would be a more common term on a cam card but it's a little harder to work with when you're doing your degreeing math so uh i use the 223 and this is why so because it opened seven before top and it closed 223 after top we add these two together and we get 230 at 50. So this cam's 230 at 50. And then to find the center line, we're going to divide that by two. So 115. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the 223 uh, intake closing and we're going to minus out half the lobe and we're going to get 108 intake center line and uh, the peak lobe lift we saw was 334 lift so the 230 from it was advertised at 228 that's within one percent uh 334 was advertised at 336 so we're within one percent so this lobe happens to be slightly asymmetric and I'm going to show you guys the numbers at 200. And you'll see that the center line changes a little bit. And that's because the lobe is slightly asymmetric. It's common. Um, valve area rules sort of say that the valve spends most of its time at around two thirds of full lift. So when we check it at 200, you're going to see a slight intake center line change. And that's the one that I like to go with. Okay, so now we're back and we've checked the cam at 200 lift. So you can kind of see my really cool graph here. So last time we checked it at 50, which was down here all the way up over to back to 50. But now we're more in the upper two thirds of the lobe. 200 over the nose to 200 so it opened 36 degrees after top dead center and it closed 
177 degrees after top center which is the exact same thing as three degrees before bottom center but because because of the math trust me it's just my little shorthand you're better off to use this 177 so and then because the opening happened after top center this is going to become a minus um, when we did the 50 because the seven happened before top it became in addition to turn the 223 into 230 but because uh, we've moved higher up the scale and there's less load up there this is now happening after top center it's a minus so 177 minus 36 uh, this lobe is 141 degrees at 200. Uh, and then we divide that by two. It's more shorthand. Uh, 70 and a half degrees. So that's why we're going back to our clever closing number here. Um, 177 minus 70 and a half is a 106.5 center line. So um that's why i usually like to check them a little farther up is sometimes lobes are slightly asymmetrical and the difference in checking them closer to the bottom versus uh higher up in the lobe can give you some small differences it's one and a half degrees but i would just um say that i feel like this cam's going to act more like a 1065 because two-thirds of full lift uh, up here is where the cam theoretically or the valve spends the most of its time um, open all right a couple helpful hints to setting up your engine uh, to degree the cam is uh, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and rotate the engine in the proper direction um, I see a lot of guys move engines the wrong way that that will not help you get proper timing numbers um so yeah just make sure you're always turning this engine the proper direction if you're looking at the front of the v8 engine clockwise is the proper direction to turn it um, as far as setting up your indicator on the number one intake valve um, i know it's easy to look at the lifters and they don't have any numbers so sometimes you look at them and don't know which one is which so if you can get the engine on the compression stroke where both lifters are closed and the engines on TDC um, what you want to do and this is something to note that if if you have the piston at top dead center and you move the engine at all and you see movement in the lifters you're at overlap so you need to turn the engine one more full turn to get to TDC compression but once you've gotten to TDC compression and the lifters are closed then go ahead at that point and rotate the engine in the proper direction and the first uh, lifter to move will be the exhaust the exhaust happens first after the compression stroke and then once you've identified that go ahead and set up the uh, indicator on the other uh, lifter that'll be the intake all right well thanks for staying with us on this i hope uh we covered the basics here hope you guys uh get your camshaft to greet in properly uh never forget to pressurize your rocker arms uh your y block will thank you for it and uh